Welcome back. Joining me now is a man who has personally seen both sides of Israeli-Palestinian conflict in a way no one else has. Musab Hassan Youssef was born in Ramallah to his father, Sheikh Hassan Youssef, a founding leader of Hamas. Musab Youssef himself was also part of Hamas, imprisoned by Israel's internal security service. It was during a period in Israeli prison that he was first approached about spying for Israel. Youssef acted as a double agent inside Hamas uh, for nearly a decade beside uh, his uh, father in the highest ranks of Hamas. He has since uh, converted to Christianity and lives in the United States where he has political asylum. Good evening. Thank you very much for coming. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Uh, great honor to have you here. And, um, you know, I, I read a book uh, mm. around two years ago. And I was asking myself, what was he thinking? <laughs> what was he thinking to do something like that is basically to know that you are committing suicide in one way or another. Mm -hmm. What were you thinking? Um, you know, I was not thinking. Uh, sometimes uh, our mind uh, could be uh, deceptive. Uh, sometimes uh, we come to do irrational decisions, but we follow our heart. Um, I know how it feels like, you know, to, uh, uh, for someone to lose a member of their family. Uh, violence is not a good thing. Blood shedding is against uh, human nature. And uh, my heart, uh, uh, if it went against uh, my mind, I choose to follow my heart, I guess. And you followed your heart because what? What did you see? Because you grew up in uh, Sheikh Hassan Yusuf's house. Right. You saw things that maybe some of the journalists, some of the people in the world would like to see how it works. Mm. You saw everything like at home. Right. What did you see? You know, we had, and we still have, many social uh, and uh, economical problems. And uh, if you look and uh, ask why, you'll find it's because of the state of uh, delusion. You know, the absolute control of religion, people believe in theories, and they think that it's uh, truth. And unfortunately, this is not allowing them to see the other. They're not uh, allowing them to see humanity in other cultures and in other societies. Uh, my father and his likes um, uh, believe that they are uh, superior to uh, all other people. And uh, there was something wrong in that picture when I start to be exposed uh, to uh, the intelligence world and to understand deception and to see the other side, to see the humanity in the other side, um, to uh, meet uh, with uh, foreigners from the United States, from Europe, from Asia, to understand that, you know, we are not uh, different and we need uh, to understand each other. I came to some uh, realizations that killing and violence uh, is not uh, the way. When was the point where you got to this conclusion? Do you remember a specific point where you sat down with yourself and said, enough is enough, I don't think that this is the way. Right. I, there is much bigger things in the world. There is somebody else on the other side that I don't know. Do you remember the specific point in your life where, yeah. where you said, no, it's, it's not what I think that I am? Right. You know, it's, it's a story of uh, transformation. It's an evolution. There are some turning points, important events that happen in my life. Uh, one of the most important ones uh, is what happened in prison, uh, witnessing Hamas torturing uh, our own people. And for the first time, I came face to face with the real nature of Hamas organization, which, you know, they don't care for the lives of Palestinians. They don't care for the lives of uh, anybody. Uh, all they care about for their theory that is just uh, 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 demonized it's coming from uh, hell. It does not have uh, any uh, uh, righteous thing in it, except killing and destroying and uh, uh, intimidating uh, a whole uh, society. And uh, I asked myself, is this the way that my father is trying to bring justice uh, to our people? He used to sit down on the table, dinner table, and tell me, if I die for the sake of Islam and Hamas, make sure you take care of your mother. That used to make me cry. This is how much he was uh, dedicating his uh, time, his life, for the sake of Hamas. 
And uh, here I am face to face, seeing Hamas torturing our people, uh, killing uh, them. And of course, later on, we saw what Hamas and we saw the manifestation of their ideology in Gaza Strip, how they executed their rivals. And uh, we see how they are using children and women as uh, 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 human shields. And uh, this uh, gives you uh, an idea that, you know, you have to uh, stand for your own truth. Did you ask them why? Did you approach and said, why are you doing that? Because you had, let's say, the stage, because you were the son, you are the son of Sheikh Hassan Yusuf, so you, and you were in prison, right. and you paid in one way or another the price by the Israelis. Did you come and ask them, why are you doing what you're doing? Honestly, I didn't. Uh, first of all, I was, uh, at that time, I was scared, like everyone else. Even other uh, top Hamas leaders were scared. Uh, nobody could question uh, uh, what uh, the Hamas security wing was uh, doing, because they were afraid to be accused of collaborating with Israel as well. Uh, for that reason, many people just uh, chickened out. And uh, I was uh, afraid. I was very young, 18 years old at that time. And some people around you, your friends, your other relatives, did they think the same way that you think and they decided to give in to fear? Um, you know, I don't remember anybody standing uh, against uh, Hamas. Even today in Gaza, you see the reality of the movement. You stand against them. The first thing, they will uh, accuse you of uh, treason. And the second thing, they will execute you without trial. So this is uh, their uh, reality. So then comes the Israeli side mm. that offers you um, another way. He offers you something uh, different, something uh, to see a different perspective. Right. And at the beginning, you tell him what? Go? Yeah, and, go, go and away. Go away? I don't right. want to, Are you crazy? <laughs> you know, let's not forget that the, uh, uh, the reason that I agreed to work for Israel was not uh, to uh, uh, serve Israel. The reason was to take revenge from Israel. I was motivated by anger, by revenge. Uh, I had uh, personal, ideological, political, and national reasons to hit uh, the state of Israel. And this is why I said yes. I said yes to manipulate them, to uh, give information to Hamas, to attack them from within. Now, I was sent uh, to prison, and in prison I came face to face with Hamas brutality, uh, accusing those people of collaborating with Israel. Now, after I was released from prison, I came to realize that none of those people who were tortured and killed had any relationship with the Israeli intelligence. Anyway, now, I start to find that I was learning some truth from my worst enemies that I did not learn from my people. And I became curious. So I continued in that relationship, not giving Israel any information, just for my own uh, benefit. Uh, benefit to know the truth. Because I witnessed you know, the bloodshed in the first Palestinian Intifada, the second Palestinian Intifada. I was very young. I wanted to know what was really happening. And again, I'm coming from a, a, a leader's uh, house. We think like leaders. And I wanted to know the reasons why we were suffering. And uh, now I find uh, myself crossing all the red lines, not for the sake of pleasure, not for the sake of taking revenge you know, from my own people. I love my people. You know, my plan was not to uh, uh, betray my uh, father. But uh, now the truth starts to uh, uh, be revealed gradually. And I saw completely a different uh, uh, reality, which you know, eventually led me to uh, at least do what I could to stop killing. Because in my opinion, there was nothing wrong. I, I wa there is no way to go wrong by saving a human life. Let's put it this way. And I'm not here to promote for the uh, Israeli intelligence or the Israeli government. I'm not their representative. But basically, we were not only saving uh, Israeli lives, also Arab lives, American lives. Saving a human life is, uh, is a precious thing. And uh, uh, at, at least especially when there's like a, a, an ocean of confusion about politics and religion, you say, the least I can do, let's stop the madness. Then after that, we can think politics and religion and see who's right and who's wrong. You know, what you're telling me is basically that um, people are being brainwashed. And to take mm -hmm. these people who are captive in the narrative and in the false history or the false facts, mm -hmm. uh, facts, so-called facts that people are putting in their minds, it's almost impossible if you are in Gaza, if you are suffering each and every day in Gaza, if you are in this enclave and you cannot get out of it. So when you are talking, I'm, I'm thinking and I'm saying, this is 
a depressing situation. This is a depressing situation because what are the chances that we are able mm -hmm. basically to convince anyone on the other side that your way is, is that you are not a traitor, but you are someone who got up and tried to say, hey, I'm normal. You know, I don't, don't want you to be killed. Right. I don't want to be killed. I don't want anyone on the other side to be right. killed. We're talking only about land and different religion. Right, right. You know, it's, uh, I'm not, uh, in, I don't care really, you know, what they uh, see me. What really matters is how I see myself. Uh, we didn't do anything wrong. Again, uh, 14 years working for the Israeli intelligence, I personally did not get involved in any killing or assassinations. And uh, I'm not considering myself uh, righteous uh, or more righteous than anyone who works for the agency. People on the other side, unfortunately, when I say the other side, in general, the Arab culture, they live in a state of uh, delusion. And this is a reality that we need to face uh, with courage. Arabs know this about uh, themselves. They have natural resources, they have human resources, they have everything in the world. Why are they behind? Do they ask themselves why? You know, because when you believe in a theory, and you think that your theory is superior to all other theories and everyone else supposed to be killed or uh, they're just uh, pagans uh, and less uh, this is a big problem you know uh, everybody yeah, has some a theory people will say that the Jews are uh, the Jewish side is looking at their theory as the only theory as the only truth they mm -hmm. they see themselves as the you right. know the the Jewish the, the elected selected people of God and right. and this is the Jewish land and mm -hmm. you know some people will say the same on the other side that the other side the Jewish side is looking at himself the same way as the Arab which means right. that they're not that different right but here is here is uh, the uh, uh, the reality this is the human condition. Uh, not only Arabs uh, or the majority of Arabs live in the uh, delusion of uh, uh, religious uh, theories. Also, there are some uh, Jewish uh, groups. Uh, there are some Christian groups. Um, in Asia, you'll find the same. It's a human condition. It does not differentiate between uh, this race or this color. Um, but the difference in the state of Israel, that it's uh, the constitution has the upper hand. The religious uh, groups don't have upper hand above uh, the uh, uh, constitution. Not even God, it seems. Uh, not, uh, there is no God above the uh, Israeli constitution. It's a democratic uh, model. And I hope that uh, Arabs can uh, learn uh, to know the difference, even though the majority are uh, Jewish. But you see, Arabs uh, uh, move freely in uh, Israel. There are like uh, more than uh, 1.3 million Arabs who live in the state of Israel. Discrimination is a crime against the law. The law will p punish anybody who is discrimin uh, 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 what is it? discrimination against uh, the, the, the Arabs or look uh, down at them or use violence against them. Uh, now, there are some violations. There are some uh, uh, extremists who uh, go above the law and they think that they are above the law. The moment they break the law, they're punished. I want to take you back to to the days that you were a double agent, that you you sat down alone in your room mm -hmm. and thinking to yourself, what am I doing? Picking the phone to, taking the phone and calling your operator and uh, to Gunen, uh, Ben Ishaq, and, and telling him, what? Telling him, oh my God, take me out of here because enough is enough, or what am I doing? I'm crazy. Right. Well, you know, I, I had the liberty to make uh, a choice. Uh, uh, the honest truth that the Israeli intelligence did not uh, put a gun in my head and uh, they made me do things. Um, there was uh, 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 responsibility. You know, I was in a very uh, sensitive uh, position and uh, I was able to stop a suicide bomber. You know, when you say suicide bomber, people don't uh, understand what this really means. It's someone going. Uh, among uh, civilians that he doesn't know. He does not ask them if they were Arabs or Jews or Muslims or Christians. He just blow himself up, killing himself and killing others. This is uh, the lowest uh, level of human uh, consciousness. It's dark. And uh, when you know that you can stop something like this, even you know, you know, I'm not naive. Uh, I realized exactly, first of all, the danger that I was doing. Then, uh, how I was uh, crossing all the red lines. You know, if my mother knew about this or my father at that time, it would break their hearts. And nobody wants to disappoint their uh, parents. 
Did you do you feel that you disappointed your parents? Did yes, you I did. You yes, and uh, on the personal level, I'm I'm really sorry. You know that uh, they had to go through this uh, because of me, truly. Um, but uh, for the sake of uh, human consciousness and the evolution of the human consciousness, uh, some of us, you know, we cannot just live in our uh, delusion. You know, uh, see a different uh, truth and just uh, be cowards. Uh, see, you know, people killing each other in, in a mad situation and just uh, 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 look at the other side as we did not see anything. You don't miss your father? You don't miss your family? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just uh, happy as I am. I'm satisfied. I feel at peace. And uh, I hope uh, at some point there will be a reconciliation, not only between me and my father. Hopefully I will see reconciliation you know, between uh, uh, many people who think that they are separated, but they are not. They are the same. Uh, they are coming from the same source. And uh, God is uh, the uh, father of all, uh, Jews, Muslims, Christians, all type of people. When people come to understand this oneness, then they will see that it's not about you know, my family, my biological family. Humanity is my family. It's not only about you know, the mother who gave birth to me. How many mothers are out there you know, with heart uh, broken and they suffer a lot? They lost their children in suicide bombing attacks. Do my mother feel for them? Maybe she does not see it this way. You know, she lost me and I'm still alive, I'm still breathing and she does not talk to me. There are mothers on the Israeli side who lost their children and uh, that's it. They will never see, see them again in this life. You know, you came into the studio and you looked at your picture and you said, I look angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you angry? Well, I am not, I'm not angry. Are so, you still angry? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I try not to be because, you know, anger is not a good thing. Tolerance is better. Uh, forgiveness is better. It's a higher level of consciousness. But sometimes, you, you know, we have to be... Uh, uh, sure of what we're doing. Sometimes we have to be, uh, um, how can I say this, uh, strong uh, to stand for our uh, truths. And I might come across, you know, as uh, uh, angry or uh, frustrated. You know, we're humans. I'm a human being. And I have emotions. Uh, sometimes I speak with passion. And uh, this is uh, understandable. This does not mean that uh, I'm angry and this is not uh, my style. You know, uh, today, because I, I read in an article that Avi Sakharov uh, uh, wrote, right. uh, and you offered, offered, right. <laughs> or told the Israeli government to go out and break a war between, uh, on Hamas, to go and declare a war, a right. war on Hamas. Uh, right. You, you know, it's like I'm, I, I, I read this, right. and I said, "Oh what's my his God, problem? what? <laughs> no, what's is he? I will tell you this. Already. Is he crazy? Does Possibly. he? Is he? Is he? What? Is he not? Um, is he looking for more troubles in his life? Mm. Is mm. he? This, this is so passionate in you, this hum, humanity, uh, saving humanity and saving human lives that you are willing in one way or another to sacrifice your own life as well? No, not, not really. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not sacrificing anything. I just look at uh, reality and try not to be emotional when I see the picture. With how many Gaza wars uh, did we witness? Uh, Please, three. three. Okay. Do you think uh, Hamas is sleeping right now? They're digging, they are preparing, and they're using the same strategy, uh, using uh, uh, human uh, shields. And uh, whether it's uh, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, there is going to be another uh, uh, conflict uh, with Hamas. In my opinion, why to uh, wait till they uh, uh, become stronger and cause more trouble for the uh, innocent uh, people of uh, Gaza? I believe. But you know, a war can't uh, take the lives of a lot of people in the Gaza Strip. Yeah, well, um, Israel... the war that I'm talking about is not like a massive uh, campaign ground operation against uh, uh, the entire Gaza Strip. I actually, my suggestion was completely different. Which is? I would like uh, to see some intelligence uh, work. I would like to see some uh, uh, targeting uh, for Hamas, avoiding civilians as much as possible. The reason I'm saying this not to give Hamas a break. The moment you give them a break, uh, this is when they start uh, uh, developing their missiles and they take uh, advantage to build uh, their, uh, rebuild uh, their military wing. With that said, 
uh, they, it does not uh, mean that every day is going to be an operation. But don't let them rest. Let them expect uh, an attack coming any time, any moment. They are turning the lives of many innocent people, not only on the Israeli side, also on the Palestinian side, into a nightmare. They are the ones who should be living a nightmare. They should be expecting uh, explosions from uh, under the ground, from above uh, uh, the ground, from everywhere. They should go under the ground. This is where they belong. They belong in dark places with the demons. They should not be among innocent uh, children developing uh, missiles and uh, taking a whole nation to destruction. So I'm talking about a surgery. I'm not talking about a massive uh, full attack uh, that will take the lives of uh, innocent uh, people. I'm talking about using intelligence, uh, being uh, delicate, taking in consideration you know, the lives of many civilian people and a long-term uh, uh, warfare, psychological war war uh, warfare. Do you agree with me that there is some responsibility also to the Palestinian Authority? You know, there is a responsibility for the Palestinian uh, people uh, as well, not uh, the Palestinian uh, Authority. Unfortunately, you know, when uh, you see when a whole nation uh, let a bunch of extremists uh, uh, lead them to the slaughterhouse, this is the result, the death of many innocent people. I think this is the time for Palestinian people. It's time for Arabs to stand against Hamas because Hamas is the enemy of Palestinian people. You know, but we both are talking, when we are talking, we're talking from a position that uh, you're right now living in the United mm. States, which is the greatest democracy. I'm living here in Israel, which is the greatest, which is a democracy. It is, we saw the Arab Spring. We saw that it's very hard to, to educate the Arab people to a democracy. Mm. Maybe it's even impossible. Maybe this is not the way. Maybe it's the, the way that me and you are seeing it cannot be imposed or cannot happen right. in the Palestinian territory or because it's a different culture that don't understand dem right. the democracy. We saw that the yeah. United States tried it in Iraq and tried it in Afghanistan and tried it in many other places and it's not able to actually implement it on the ground. Yeah. Well, democracy, you know, as, as a model uh, represented by uh, uh, Plato's uh, Republic, you know, it's uh, completely, uh, it needs to be taken as, uh, as is. And you have to be, believe in the philosophy behind it. It's not only just uh, an idea. Uh, now, unfortunately, uh, pushing democracy on uh, uh, some uh, societies that they don't understand the concept and the philosophy behind it, it's like uh, giving them a very advanced uh, technology, but uh, then you come to find out that uh, or realize that they don't have electricity. Uh, so how are they going to use the advanced uh, technology to start with? So first of all, you know, we need to talk about uh, basics. We need to talk about education. You know, unfortunately, in that culture, people don't accept the other opinion. It's very hard for them. And uh, uh, when they lose uh, uh, when uh, election, uh, they don't uh, accept uh, the rules of the game. And they fight uh, each other. This is not going to be the situation like this forever. It's uh, an evolution. It's going to take a uh, long time for uh, uh, Arabs to uh, uh, realize that this is the only way. Nobody has the higher truth. You know, democracy is the cure for the human condition because uh, the uh, philosophers, uh, the Greek philosophers and the uh, Indian philosophers uh, came to the same uh, realization that uh, human mind is very limited. And whatever theories we create, it's, uh, does not, uh, it's not a supreme. So so I will so try to make your life a little bit hard. Sure. Why, why to convert to Christianity if you believe in humanity? Right. Why not to stay and try as a Muslim mm. to change from the inside, to say that Islam is not like that, that Islam is not promoting killing, Islam is not telling to, on the basis, on the Quran, right. not telling its children to go and explode mm. themselves. Not, why to convert to Christianity and not show it from, from your side? Right. Well, first of all, you know, uh, I did not convert uh, from a religion to another religion. Uh, I myself uh, believe in uh, Christ uh, consciousness. I like Christ consciousness. And uh, I myself don't go to a church and uh, I don't follow uh, dogma. Uh, I am not uh, stuck in any uh, religion. I don't allow myself to be there. Then, uh, just uh, regarding to Islam. Uh, the real nature of Islam is a very violent uh, religion. Uh, it's not, it does not have tolerance in it. Uh, it uh, the goal of Islam is to conquest and to control uh, the globe. 
uh, this is uh, the intention of Muhammad. This is what he started 1400 years ago. And this people are following Islam his that footsteps. You grew up on. This is not the Islam that I grew up Well, this up is on. the Islam actually that is in the book. You know, if you read uh, the Quran, if you read uh, the Hadith, uh, the Sunnah, if you look at uh, uh, the behavior of Muhammad uh, based on the most uh, trusted Islamic resources, you will find that he used violence to achieve his uh, religious and political agendas. And what we uh, see today is only a manifestation uh, and a reflection of uh, what he started 1400 years ago. I think most Muslims are peaceful people. You know, they just want to live uh, their lives. And uh, they find it very hard to go against the flow. This is the problem. That, you know, this is the dominating uh, religion uh, of the society. And they see the problem in it. They don't follow it. They don't uh, obey it. But they know if they go against it, they will be crushed. And uh, this is just a matter of time before, you know, Muslims come to uh, uh, put an end for this uh, 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 state of uh, uh, delusion and accept other theories, accept other ideas, uh, and see uh, other enlightened uh, 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 theories out there coming from the East, coming from the West, that, you know, uh, helps uh, the human consciousness to evolve, help people to see uh, life in a better way. Do you miss something in Ramallah? <laughs> Not really. Nothing? Not really. Food? Well, you know, I changed my diet completely, so... Uh, so it, you it forgot really... all about the, Arab, <laughs> <laughs> the Arabic uh, uh, kitchen. Yeah. Um, do, you, um, do you feel alone? Well, it's not about feeling. I, I am somehow uh, alone. I think I was born alone, and uh, everyone was born alone, and uh, we die alone somehow. You know, but uh, are we in harmony, you know, with ourselves? This is the most important uh, question. Are you in harmony with yourself? Well, I am. I'm at peace with my decisions. I believe I made uh, perfect uh, decisions. Uh, and uh, I uh, sleep uh, well, I'm happy uh, every day, and uh, I'm enjoying uh, life. Musal Youssef, thank you very, very much for giving us this interview. It's been half an hour. You're welcome. Just so you know. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much uh, for giving us uh, this interview, for coming to our studios. Thank, Thank you. you. And uh, we're going out for a small break, two minutes, and then we will continue here the discussion in the studio. Don't go anywhere.